Harry Potter is a story about school kids that get caught up in terrible circumstances outside of their control, but if we shift the perspective a little bit and focus on the villain of the story, he who had a nose at some point, but somehow lost it, Lord Voldemort. And it becomes quite funny. Now imagine this, you are Lord Voldemort, a, a guy whose name is so utterly terrifying that people do not speak it, commonly referred to as he who shall not be named. But that's okay, it's normally the mudbloods that are hesitant of saying your name and frankly you don't care about them anyway, because you are the direct descendant of Salazar Slytherin. So even though your dad was a muggle, you have purer blood than anyone else in the world and you're gonna share that puritan ideas with the rest of the world. For years your obsession has been incredibly clear, which is immortality at all costs. You have dedicated your entire life to becoming immortal, you've done some pretty unspeakable things in the pursuit of this idea. And the price for that? Well now you've got a rather distinguished look and people have suggested that you look quite similar to a hard boiled egg, which you don't mind because hard boiled eggs are pretty goddamn pure. One of the most powerful magics that you've explored is the idea of the Horcrux, which is basically murdering someone to split your soul into multiple different things and then that way you, your soul is possessing an object. Sure, you have to deal with the hallucinations of your Horcrux selves chattering in your ear. And I mean like those, those pieces of your soul can be pretty intense at some points in time. But now at least you have an insurance policy against your life. But one day you hear from one of your only half competent death eaters that there has been a prophecy and that prophecy is essentially that a boy is going to be born at the end of July and that boy is probably going to kill you or you kill him or something something anyway it sounds like something you absolutely need to deal with right now and you have two choices as there are only two children that were born at this time one is the spawn of the long bottom and the other one is the spawn of the potters. Either way, there ain't no way a long bottom is gonna challenge you. No, no shot. So you obviously take the natural choice which is going after the potters. So you go to Godric's Hollow because you know, murdering a child, a, a newborn child essentially, well, that's par for the course for the Dark Lord. And you clap that dad faster than you can say Avada Kedavra. It was super easy, barely an inconvenience. Cool, blimey, you didn't even stand a chance. Shut up, Hufflepuff. Okay, quiet, all of you, we need to find the boy. Seriously, having five different souls in your ear at any given point in time is very tedious to deal with and trying to hold off appearances so people don't think you're insane is actually equally as tedious, but it's time to find the boy. So you continue on to the crib that holds the Potter kid, and you look at the kid and you're just like, this is the boy that's gonna defy me? Jesus, man, like, how far have I fallen that this is a threat to me? But there's only one obstacle in your way, which is the boy's mother. Excuse me, madam, if you don't mind scooching out of my way, um, I promised one of my colleagues I wouldn't kill you, and you know, out of respect for him, I, I don't want to like upset him or cause him any pain, so just scooch a little bit to the side, please. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you. But she says nothing. She just keeps standing there. Look, seriously, if I kill you, my arguably best Death Eater, although the bar's set very low, fucking I've got Lucius Malfoy on my payroll, might actually betray me if I kill you. Uh, I don't want that to happen, I, I kind of need him. He does have a somewhat confusing obsession with you, so, you know, make with, the, make with it and just get out of my way, please. And she just tells you over her dead body. <laughs> Okay, I was trying to be reasonable. You call me a good day, I'm the Lord of Goddamn Darkness. You think I'm not gonna be above killing you? Well, f me, Snape be damned. So, one more of Arda Kedavra later and you're just left with the boy. And he's looking up with you with these big beady eyes and you're just like, well, gotta kill it. So you cast Arda Kedavra one more time and Frankly, you feel a bit like a one-trick pony. And I mean, you know, you just kill both of his parents, so realistically, this is a bit of a mercy killing, because like, otherwise he's gonna grow up as an orphan. But as you utter the magic words, the, the spell bounces back at you, and instead you get blown to smithereens and lose your body and turn into some corporeal form. Oh man, oh man. 
How do we lose our body? Hufflepuff, stop being a goddamn pussy, please. Oh, look at us. We're basically a shriveled testicle now, aren't we? So what do we do? We run. And with that, you're sent into years of hiding. You run away to Albania because, well, they don't have an extradition treaty to the UK at this point in time. And, like, they're a place that you can just go chill and practice your dark magics and recover. Because, you know, this is, like, the world's worst hangover at this point, isn't it? But something happens while you're in Albania. You run into a lovely and charming snake called Nagini. And she is all too happy to slither at your side so naturally you turn her into a horcrux as well when one more joins the party but this one doesn't speak like a normal person it only speaks in parts of time so now you're up to six horcruxes and the hallucinations are kind of getting out of control and what are you going to do when you're six voices and no body well one fateful day you run into someone who is completely obsessed with you that was kind of disturbing but you know who's not obsessed with you you are you are the Dark Lord after all, you are pretty fantastic. And it's kind of ironic really, because this guy is kind of a stuttering, bumbling idiot, for all intents and purposes. Or at least that it looks like it's an act, but who's to be sure? But desperate times, they call for desperate measures. And this fool just happens to become a teacher at Hogwarts, so it's kind of like a win-win. You, you infiltrate Hogwarts and, you, you know, you also get like a body to attach yourself to, you you essentially become a bit of a parasite, except you have to hide under this crusty turban. And it's crazy because in Hogwarts, that goddamn child who, who robbed you of your body is attending at the same year that you go. What are the chances of that actually happening? So you start hatching a scheme to, you know, to get this kid. And also the Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher? Sorcerer? The Syphilis Stone. And also, by being at Hogwarts, you can keep an eye on Snape. He is your Death Eater, after all, but it's surprising that he doesn't seem to acknowledge your existence, and it seems like he's quite chummy with Dumbledore. But you're pretty sure that's nothing. Like, you know, Snape is loyal to the end. He's ride or die, you know? He's never gonna betray you. I mean, like, there's that weird obsession with Lily, but she's gone now. All that's left is you. Anyway, with this bumbling idiot Quirrell and Tile, you start getting to work on some kind of evil machinations. And you start seeking out ways to resurrect your physical form. Step one is to find the Syphilis Stone, a magical artifact that promises eternal life. All you have to do is get to Gringotts, get into the vault, and it's as good as yours. Pretty simple job all in. In the meantime, working with Quirrell makes your sick souls feel kind of dirty. Now you're kind of forced to hitch a ride on this disgusting person, and you have to hide under a turban for a goddamn year. It's beneath me. Disgustingly cringe, by the way. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to us. Yes, but we don't have a choice. We have to continue on. Sir? Who are you talking to? It's just me and you in the room. Shut up, Quirrell. Do you ever think we'll wash our face again? Face? We don't even have a body. And you're worried about our face? No, be quiet, guys. We'll get the syphilis stone and everything will be good. Excuse me, uh, sir. Sir, Quirrell, if you don't shut the hell up, I am going to kill you. Do you know how dark and damp this goddamn turban is? And you keep wrapping me up in this thing all day around and I have to just accept that because I can't show my face here. And I mean, Quirrell actually proves to be even less competent than your worst expectations, you know? Over the years, he tries to do a number of things to disrupt Harry Potter. For one, he tried to curse Potter's broom in a game of Quidditch. And then Snape actually managed to counter curse that before Snape got set on fire and distracted him and so nothing actually happened. Don't even get started on the troll. My god, man. How do you how do you set a troll on some kids and nothing bad happens? Anyway, you've schemed and schemed and you schemed to get the syphilis stone. But Dumbledore had moved it from Gringotts to Hogwarts for safekeeping and Seriously, I don't think anything's ever safe in Dumbledore's hands, not even fashion. How do you go from looking like a model to looking like a Christmas tree? It defies belief. But you know, with the with the stone in Hogwarts, all you have to do is get through the trials and you can steal the stone. Quirrell, bless his rather simple mind, actually manages to get you close to the stone. He gets through all of the defences pretty quickly, actually, all things considered. And you, you honestly thought that was going to go terribly, but... You know, he three-headed dog fluffy, didn't stand a chance. Surprisingly, Quirrell's a damp hand on a harp. And then there was that stupid plant, the devil snare. I mean, that was really juvenile Dumbledore. Are you kidding me? Like, try and think of something else that's vaguely useful, my god. And then that game of chess. Well, at least Quirrell was somewhat intelligent, I guess. At least in terms of chess, not really 
planning or organizing or execution. But it's good at chess, thank God. But then there was the mirror, and the mirror had a charm on it that basically said, haha, if you want this stone, you cannot get it. And that's just very annoying because you obviously want this stone, so now you're plum out of luck. Like, but actually, why couldn't Quirrell get the stone? Because Quirrell didn't actually want the stone, he wanted to give it to you. So theoretically, he didn't actually need the stone or want the stone. So who, who was going to always give it to you? Unless, Quir did Quirrell want the stone for himself? That's not the only logical conclusion. Quirrell wanted the stone for himself. That's why he couldn't get it from the, the mirror. Huh. What an asshole. But suddenly you hear footsteps behind you, and of course it's the Potter Boy. He also managed to defeat all of those other traps. I mean, it goes to show that Dumbledore really doesn't know what he's doing if an 11-year-old can break through. And I mean, I mean, how did he beat the chess thing? That was kind of hard for Quirrell, and well, does that mean that Quirrell's just got the mentality of an 11-year-old? And then he opens his mouth. Wait a minute, you're not Snape. Snape? Me? Snape tried his best to save you, my boy. And he would have failed if there was an, uh, a, a fire on his clothes that managed to distract me. It's Snape? Snape tried to save the boy? Ah, what does Quirrell know? He's just a tool. Snape is just pretending, so Dumbledore thinks he's completely on his side, and, you know, obviously Snape just has to play the part perfectly, or he ends up losing his cover. Oh, yes, actually, you're probably right there. And then the Potter boy comes over, and you realize that he actually has the stone in his pocket. And then you're like, Quirrell, let me talk to the boy. Quirrell doesn't turn around so you can actually face the boy. No, he makes you do your whole ominous speech in the face of a mirror. And I mean, the boy is horrified, terrified even, because I mean, like, you know, even in the magical world, having another thing coming out of a, the back of someone's head, that's pretty next level disgustingly gross. So, it's perfect. Maybe you should stay on the back of someone's head forever. But anyway, it's nice to get that beanie off because my god, it was getting pretty hot and sweaty under there. Like, why did he need a turban? It, like, wait, with so many wraps, it's insane. Potter, give me the stone. Please? If you give me the stone, I'll give you back your family. Yeah? If you give me the stone, no one else has to get hurt? It's, a, it's very reasonable. Potter, he, he's kind of staring at you a little bit dumbfounded, and he starts edging away slightly. Quirrell, grab the boy. So Quirrell leaps forward, and he grabs hold of the boy, and then, for his trouble, he starts burning, and his hand literally disintegrates on him. And then the boy reaches for his face. <laughs> what is going on? You scream as, you know, Quirrell literally disintegrates into the ground, and you're just left there looking at what could have been. And how is it possible that you lost to an 11 year old boy just simply touching you? Your worst nightmare has come true. You were foiled by Harry Potter once again. And once again you are reduced to a shadow, a bodiless, formless wraith. And I mean, what is this? Lord of the Rings? Like, where is your one horcrux to rule them all? Why is it always so going so poorly? Well, that was a disaster, wasn't it? Yeah, you don't say, Ravenclaw. Who knew a kid could destroy someone just by touching them? I mean, it's only fair if a teacher touches a kid inappropriately, right? Dude. But I mean, that Quirrell guy, even even Malfoy would have been better than him, no? Oh, Lucius, you mean the guy with an extremely punchable face? Yes, that guy. Where is he, by the way? He should be trying to help me, surely. What, what, what's going on here? So you go back into hibernation, and you are slowly waiting for the day where you regain your power. And every now and again, a minion will come up to you and give you updates and all of the goings on in Hogwarts. My lord, the Chamber of Secrets was opened. Oh, hang on, really? Again? Oh, it's been so long. What happened? Yes, it appears that the diary of Tom Riddle was found. Oh, God, no. Harry Potter's gonna kill me, isn't he? Okay. And my lord, it was used to possess the Weasley girl into opening the chamber, and also the Basilisk. I mean, that's pretty good. We can use the Basilisk to kill all of the mudbloods in the school. That was the original purpose of that. Uh, hmm? Uh, not quite. The Potter boy found the Sword of Gryffindor and stabbed the Basilisk in the head, and then used the tooth to destroy the diary. Oh, I don't feel so good. Well, at least it's a little bit quieter now. But that's mildly inconvenient, isn't it? So now Harry knows how to destroy the Horcruxes. Does he know where the Horcruxes are yet? No, my lord, I don't, I, I don't believe he does just yet. Well, losing the Basilisk was 
a little bit inconvenient because having a scaly death machine is never a terrible thing to have, but hey ho, it's only par for the course that a giant goddamn snake would lose to an 11 year old boy. That just seems very reasonable at this point, right? I mean, how did Harry manage to stab it in the mouth? when the Masterless turns you to stone if you look at it, but whatever. It is what it is. We, we roll with the punches and we continue on, right? And I mean, losing a Horcrux, it's also particularly problematic because now you are down a soul and it was a very large chunk of your soul as well. But hey, what's a chunk of your soul for a future returning Dark Lord? You just need a new plan to create a new body and you can start the process all over again. And your minion comes back to you. He, he looks like he's pretty eager. He's an eager beaver, actually. My lord, we have news from Peter Pettigrew. Peter Pettigrew? Wormtail. Oh, the guy with the rat obsession. Oh, God, no, not him. Surely not, man. Well, the guy's been cosplaying as a Weasley rat for the last, like, 12 years. Of course he has, because... Oh my god, who would want to be a Weasley rat for 12 years? That is just... Wow. What does he want? Because at this point, I'm not so sold on him. Well, he's got a way to get your body back and also get Potter at the same time. Oh, 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 this, oh, oh this is gonna be good, isn't it? What is his brilliant scheme then? Well, Hogwarts is hosting the Triwizard Cup soon, and he's thinking about making the cup a port key that we can use to teleport Harry to a graveyard and then we use his blood to create a new body for you. Okay, and you expect Harry to win? He's not even old enough to get himself into the Goblet of Fire, what is... okay, sure. Wormtail really has a, a wild imagination, doesn't he? Well, Wormtail already put his name in the cup and it got drawn. Oh, I bet Dumbledore handled that real well. I believe he asked if Harry put the name in the goblet very calmly. Huh? Yeah, he definitely didn't scream in front of anyone. Just no matter what anyone tells you. Let me get this straight. We are going to manipulate the most public and televised event in the wizarding world, rig it so Harry Potter wins, and then that way he can touch the cup that is a port key so he can be transported to a graveyard that will allow us to harvest his blood to get me a new body. Yes, my lord. What an airtight plan. I can't imagine that could go wrong. Oh, this is stupid, isn't it? Yes, it is stupid. Hey, we could do it though. Hufflepuff? Jesus, man. But who cares? It's better than just sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, you're probably right, Slytherin. So the plan kicks into action and you wait with the patience of a saint. You watch and wait and eagerly anticipate for the eventual failure of the Triwizard Cup because frankly is an absurd plan and when Harry is fighting the dragon and is almost losing you just know that this was the dumbest idea that as anyone has ever had but hey if Harry dies to the dragon it's fine you still remove a threat you can always find a new body in a different means it's okay but with Wormtail He's cosplaying as Mad-Eye Moody now, and I mean, if that's not a demonstration of the lapse of security in Hogwarts, you don't know what is. Because, I mean, if you can go and rig a thing like this, just because of a little polyjuice potion, Hogwarts has some problems that definitely need to be addressed, but that's fine, because this is amazing. It's still going poorly, but there's still a glimmer of hope. After you get an update on the dragon, you start setting up the graveyard, because, you know, I mean, he defeated a dragon. He probably could actually win the cup hands down on his own. I mean, Spotter Boy is pretty goddamn special. Old Wormtail is going to ensure that that works out perfectly. And guess what? Harry actually shows up. He actually wins. By George, Wormtail is a genius. But Harry did bring along a friend, and I guess that's whatever. Like, you know, the more the merrier. Wormtail just killed the guy. Wormtail, Avada Kedavra is the, the, the young lad. I mean, it is what it is. Nothing personal, kid. Mr. Potter, what a goddamn pleasure. It's been a couple years, hasn't it? It's a shame I look like a shriveled ball bag right now. Please, just hang tight. We're gonna fix this problem too sweet, and then I'll be right with you, and I'll be able to agree you appropriately. 
shortly. So you lock them up on a statue and you let the ritual begin. And you know, with a bone and a little bit of blood, it does the trick and you are very satisfied. But when it's over, you're back, you're upright, you are erect. You run your hands all over your body and you've got that hard boiled egg feeling. And that nose, you thought your nose would come back, but thank God that didn't happen. You still have the no nose. Naturally, you summon the Death Eaters and they all commune around you as if they didn't hide from you for the last like 15 or 20 years or whatever these supposed loyalists that clearly clearly are incredibly loyal to you especially that lucius malfoy guy god he has such a punchable face doesn't he and i mean even wormtail didn't save you out of loyalty it was purely fear now, you are essentially a roko's basilisk so eh, fair enough but you know you're not too pleased about the intention but you are pleased about the result and as you walk up to lucius you're punishing all of these guys for essentially betraying you for goddamn 10 years and giving you all these excuses and he's just like my god lucius you are a goddamn disgrace but whatever you're not gonna let a little bit of treachery ruin your day you have your body you have the potter you are on top of the goddamn world all because of some insane scheme Truly remarkable, actually, when you think about it. But it's time to play with your food, because, you know... Did you like my plan, Potter? I thought it was a brilliant plan. I came up with it myself, and I executed it flawlessly, didn't I? Oh, God. Didn't I, Wormtail? Oh, y yes, my lord. Good boy, here's a hand for your trouble. Oh, thank you, my lord. Oh, where was I? Oh, yes, flawless plan, perfectly executed. I'm the greatest wizard that's ever lived. Oh, Mr. Potter, um, unfortunately... I know how to prove to the world that there is... I have no equal, and... Uh, not even the infamous Harry Potter. I hope you understand. You tell everyone it was love that saved Potter. Love. Oh, how lovely. Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore because there's no one to love you right now, is there, boy? But you don't want to, you know, just kill him. You need to make sure it's like a show. You need to demonstrate that Harry Potter won't get the best I'm you. going to touch you now, Mr. Potter. My lord, maybe, maybe you should have say that you might get us in trouble oh relax random minion he's not trying to turn himself into a girl i'm pretty sure we're fine so you touch the scar and you challenge harry to a duel because you know you want to give him a fair fight you want to prove there is no equal and also you force him into the forms and the nicety because that way people cannot question your honor but of course you start off with the cruciatus curse because why the hell not? Gotta start off strong, gotta make him realise that he's made a big mistake in just existing and being in your presence. The kid tries to hit you with an Expelliarmus. An Expelliarmus! Like, what is that? An Expelliarmus in the face of the Dark Lord. What a slap in the face. What a disrespectful little shit. But you counter it and you lean over him. I'm going to kill you now, Mr. Potter. But you chuck him away and he manages to run and he ducks behind a grave. I want you to look at me, Harry, while I do it. Sir, stop saying these things. This is very disturbing. I want to relish. Oh, God. What the hell? Shut up, Hufflepuff. Get to work, Voldy. Just as you're about to seal the deal, something horrible happens. Your spells collide and, and a light erupts between you. And you're wondering what in the hell is going on? He just used an Expelliarmus and somehow is matching your much more powerful and much more superior and wonderful spell with something so juvenile. It's truly heartbreaking that this is happening. I swear guys, this doesn't happen often. Every other time that I've done this has never been like this. Oh God, this is tragic. Oh, you are pathetic, Voldy. That's an Expelliarmus. And then suddenly the ghost of all the people that you killed along the way appear in front of you, materializing like phantasms out of your wand. And they start standing behind Harry. And of course, there's Lily and James and that young lad that you just killed a minute ago. Oh, how does this boy have the plot armor of a god? Also, why are Lily and James suddenly so strong when they couldn't even put up a fight when they were alive and trying to protect their goddamn child? It's crazy. Somehow they're much stronger in death. Somehow they give Harry the chance to escape by jumping into you and Harry runs away and grabs the port key. Wormtail? Y yes, my lord. Did it not occur to you, hypothetically, to make that a one-way port key? Just, just so we're clear. Uh, honestly, man, you all disappoint me. If it wasn't for the fact that there was literally 
no one else and you guys are the best that i have i would kill you all how did you let him slip through your fingers how did you not do the porky thing why didn't you just grab the porky i don't know anything you could have done so many different things in that situation and you objectively decided not to i need i, I need snape i need i need anyone who's vaguely useful um, we're probably gonna have to make a trip to Azkaban and break out, like... Imagine having goddamn Lucius Malfoy, man. When I could have Lestrange, sure, she is completely deranged, but my god, she's actually something that isn't Lucius Malfoy. Still, you're back. First of all, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, um, please give it a like, and also... I'm going to be doing a part two in a little bit, so subscribe to the channel for that and also more videos like this, I guess. Um, I also want to shout out my members, Lavender, Yuri and Alan. And also Pjobs, he's also my uh, Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and have a great life.